Hi guys and welcome back to the channel UI Path with Yebe. My name is Yebe and it's time for another video. Um, this one is actually a response to a question from a viewer. So a few weeks ago I made a video about the unified target. There should be a link to that somewhere up here. Um, and a viewer named Thomas asked me how can I open multiple instances of the same application, in his case WordPad, and then navigate between those two instances and, and, and automate them. So we're going to look at that in this video. So let's get to it. All right, so besides uh, an empty project in UiPath Studio, what we have here on my desktop are two uh, WordPad documents, doc1 and doc2. And if we open those, we can see that uh, doc1 is empty and doc2 just has a little bit of text in it, right? So we will um, actually link them open. And then we'll go into UiPath Studio and we'll use a uh, use application uh, browser activity. We'll indicate the application that we want to automate. We'll select document one, and then we'll do the same with document two. So what this is going to do is it's going to create two instances of um, UI elements inside of UiPath in which we can then add activities, type into activities or whatever. And that's re that's really great because they have each their own selector. If we look, look at the um, document one up here, we can see that the selector uh, if we open that in the editor here, we can see that it actually points to something called doc1. It doesn't know where the file is, so we'll need to tell it that in just a second. Uh, but if we look at the selector for the other instance down here, we can see that that uh, wants to look for document uh, 2. But it doesn't know how to actually open these documents because there's no file path anywhere here. So we'll need to provide that as a, a, an argument to these uh, applications. So I'll just type it in very quickly. That's the document one, and then I'll do the same down here for document two. Of course, remember to change that. So now we have uh, basically two instances that will open. So if we run this, let me just close uh, my WordPad instances here. So if we run this now, what should happen? Well, let's see what happens. Studio should minimize in just a second. And then it's going to open first one document and then close and then open hopefully the other document and close it. And that's not re really what we wanted because we want to both documents to stay open on the screen so we can work with both of them. So we'll go back into UiPath Studio and we will then uh, on the use application uh, doc one uh, part up here, we are going to set the close property here to never. And we'll do the same for the other one. Because that means the, the applications won't actually close. So if we run it again now, we should now open both documents, but not close them. So let's see how that goes. It opens document one, but actually never opens document two. So why doesn't it open document two? I'm not really sure. But what we can do in the uh, options for the document one, uh, user application activity here is we can also go to the open property and say that we should always open it. And I think why it didn't open the second document is some kind of confusion because WordPad is already open or something. But by saying that it should always open uh, WordPad, it should now create two instances of um, the WordPad application, one for each of the two documents. So let's check that, close uh, that one instance that did open and run it again. And now we get one and two instances. If we minimize Studio, we can see here they are on top of each other, but we actually do get uh, two instances. So, so far, so good, right? Let's uh, let's um, build a little more onto this. Um, the first thing is I'm going to do a move window for both of these two uh, instances so they are not on top of each other. So the first one I'll move to an X position of uh, 200. And the other one, I will move to an X position of a thousand. So that'll just position them so they are not uh, sort of on top of each other. 
And then we can do a type into activity for each of these two um, windows. So in the first one, we'll just type in this is document one. And then we'll do a type into in the second one as well. This is document two, right? So this is this is basic stuff, and and this should of course work since we have two instances of UI elements, each with their own unique selector. Um, so when we see this, we should see one instance open, move over to the left, type in this is document one, and then the other document will open over on the right side and type in this is document two. So everything is 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 fine and dandy because this is basic UI stuff. But is there a better way of, of controlling these? Because if I wanted to type something into document one, then document two, as we just have done, and then go back to document one, how do I do that? Well, the, the easy way, of course, here in Studio is to simply take the, uh, the document one um, application activity here and copy it, and then go down here and paste it back in. And we could then type in more stuff for document one and this should actually work in theory let's try it out i'm just going to close uh, all of my wordpad windows here and then write so it opens document one moves it to the left types in this is document one opens document two types in this is document two and then goes back to document one and types, hopefully, no, it couldn't find it. Well, this is really underlines the point I'm trying to make. Selectors are bad if you want to jump between uh, instances of a UI element. Uh, there's a better way of doing it, and that's the whole point here. We don't want to use a copy of the first selector down here. We're going to delete it. Then I'm just going to collapse these two first uh, application uh, scopes and then drag in another use application uh, browser scope down here. And we're not going to select anything on the screen with it. We're going to do something different. Up here in the first one where we create or open the first document, what we can do is we can go over here to the properties and there's this input element and output element property. And what we can do here is we can, when this um, UI element is created, we can create a variable and store that UI element in that variable. And then we can reuse the value of that variable at a later point, in this case, in the third uh, application scope activity. So what we'll do here in the input output element, we'll go to the output element, press control K to create a new variable. And we'll just call it my first WordPad, right? Now we have a variable that holds that, um, that window or that application. So what we can do if we collapse this again and go down to this new one we put in, instead of creating a selector with all of the problems that that can cause, as we just saw, um, we can use that variable. So we go here now to the input element property, and then we'll just use this my first WordPad variable. And now it'll know which window it is we want to type something into. So now if I use another type into activity and type in we are back in document one. Let's close them before we run it again. So we open document one, move it to the left, type something into it, open document two, type into it, and then it'll go back to document one using not the selector, but the value of the variable we created when we created the first instance of that document one window. So Thomas, I hope this uh, is some help when you're navigating between multiple instances of the same application. Using these input element and output element uh, properties can be very, very valuable when you're navigating or automating applications where you have a lot of windows open, because you can use that on a window level as well within like a an MDI application. I hope it answered your questions. If anyone else has questions to this video or to something else, leave it in the comments below. And also, I hope this created some value for you. So please give the video a thumbs up if it did and if you liked it. And also, if you like my channel, make sure you subscribe to it and hit the notification bell. Also, make sure you check out one of these two videos. I'm not sure which ones they are, but YouTube kind of makes that decision for me. 
But um, yeah, check them out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you back on the channel. Uh, and thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.